Thank you. So it will be more about tertiary structure and the difficult dif uh, relationships between tertiary and secondary structures and sequences. So as um, now it's more and more apparent that um, RNA structures are uh, oh, everywhere. And uh, lots of these RNA molecules are trans uh, produced from uh, the genomes, uh, but they do not produce proteins. And in this way, they have a lot of functions to uh, uh, regulating transcription and translations. They go back to the, on DNA and to epigenetics. So all these transcripts that are called uh, non-coding RNAs are really, uh, they form various uh, networks of interactions and they are really key in the development of the cell. Now, so we are looking at, at, at those um, uh, non-coding RNA molecules and especially we are trying to uh, extract information about those, uh, their functions in, uh, in the cell from the sequences. So now, we have a lot of genomic data. Uh, we have some structures. So now the, the idea is, can we compare those structures with the genomic data? And can we exploit this uh, high-level information uh, present in the uh, structures for detecting and annotating structural non-coding RNAs? So we try to, uh, the, the, to mix sequences with structures, 3D structures, and to, to extract as much information as we can to detect non-coding RNAs. Now, we are at the molecular level. Electrostatics and molecular dynamics are very important for RNA molecules because they are highly charged molecules, and actually they are also moving molecules. And so we try to compute uh, this type of uh, simulation, uh, molecular dynamic simulation, how they behave in space. Uh, uh, constantly uh, throughout uh, their, their uh, actions. And naturally, uh, you have also ions which are present, uh, uh, in, present in, the, in the solution. Some are fixed, like this one, because they exchange one water molecules with a nucleotide. And so you can see even with dynamics, they are still uh, in, in place, really. They are really localized on the RNA molecules. And there is no tertiary structure of RNA molecules without at least a couple of uh, uh, magnesium ions. Some of them are really uh, bound like, like little spheres, and so they constantly rotate and give this kind of impressions of, around the, the dynamics of the molecule. And actually, that means also that uh, these uh, molecules are highly negatively charged, and so they, they have big fields of uh, uh, electrostatic fields around their molecules, which can attract uh, ions and other proteins and other RNA, whatever. And so this is also a, a field of uh, intense computing activities there. All right, now that means also that we want to have uh, an idea about uh, where are those ions, uh, where are the nucleotides, so now we, we, you can uh, uh, collect all this information. So in 2010, you have something like 300,000 nucleotides <coughs> which are present in the databases, so, so, so uh, 60,000 RIBO nucleotides, and with a uh, resolution, and you can superimpose all the guanines, and you see all the atoms in the environment, so you can rotate this term. Uh, this type of uh, interactions that you have a, a visualization of the contact points around the nucleotide. And you can see also that, for example, in, uh, you know that the bases rotate with respect to the sugar, and you can have also some ideas that you see also all the variability in positions of the phosphate oxygen with respect to the base, and you have really two main domains, this one and that one, and in DNA, R DNA and RNA. As can be seen from this type of uh, web service uh, available to now, if you go at the next level from the nucleotide, nucleotides, uh, they, they are polymerized, they're polynucleotides, and they form what we call secondary structure, like here, that's the 2D structures of a, a group one intron, for example, that is a 3D model of this type of molecule. And you see that this, uh, very, this type of drawing represents, which rep uh, the, the, it represents really what, what, where are the, the watson creek base pair helices. You see the red parts. Red parts are only Watson Creek base pairs, helices. All the yellow parts, yellow parts are not Watson Creek base pairs, but they do all sorts of interactions. They do form contacts. And uh, you will see later that all these uh, bulges, for example, loops here, they are not uh, like this open. They are really engaged in Watson Creek, non Watson Creek pairs, but in pairing with each other or in stacking interactions. And it is because these uh, lo loops interact with each other that you can have and obtain such a compact type of molecule. So we need to understand this better, to distinguish what is 2D structures, what is 3D structure, and to keep that in databases and in alignments, and multiple alignments of RNA. So to do this, we develop an ontology of uh, these various ways of pairing. 
And this is, uh, that means instead of looking at a nucleotide with uh, uh, all the atoms, etc., we try to symbolize it with a triangle. And we will say now we give a name to a base pair by naming the edges which will interact with each other. So here, for example, that would be the Watson Creek edge because you know this will form Watson Creek pairs. Here we will call the Hookstein edge because that's uh, where you can form this type of base pairs. And here we have the sugar edge because you have the hydroxyl group of the ribose and these interact very often. Then you can annotate those with a circle uh, or, or, or square for Hookstein and sugar edge with triangle. And they are called in cis and trans because as we will see, in the next slide, when you have these triangles interacting with each other, the sugar is asymmetrically disposed with respect to the triangle. And so you have two positions, either in cis or in trans. And this is shown here. That is, the two sugars can be brought together along the same line of approach where the sugar are on the same side of the line of approach, or they can be opposite side, or they, can, uh, they will approach each other on, with the sugars on opposite line of approach. And these are the only two ways of forming pairs because agent bonds are linear and bases are planar. Basically, that's all. So now you can do the uh, annotate them. You can comp uh, uh, evaluate how many of each you, you, you can forward, produce. And in the, with uh, mixing all these triangles, and you will see you have 12 basic families of those, of, of uh, mixing these uh, triangles. You know, where, where the cis base pair, you have six, and the trans base pair, you will have six also. These Watson Creek, Watson Creek in cis, they form anti parallelisis, that is the 2D structure, secondary structure, only secondary structure. Anything else, all the others, they do exist, they occur in every single stru uh, structure of RNA, and they are really key for forming 3D structure, compact structures in uh, 3D space. And you see sometimes parallel, anti parallel, etc. And now you just give the name of the sugar, you see, if you say Uxtin sugar edge in trans, and you can see that it is the, the hook scene, and this is sugar edge with the symbols, and you can draw it. I mean, all you have to know is the structure of a nucleotide, so biochemistry 101, basically. Yeah? So you can draw them all in this way. Anyway, now we know they all exist. We, we can distinguish them. We can annotate them. We, can, uh, we know how they evolve uh, through, uh, by sequence alignments, so that they evolve differently. These, these base pairs evolve differently from the, that base pair. The Watson Click base pairs evolve in a very special way, very unique way of, evolve, uh, of evolving, and, but these are different. Now, just to show you, uh, um, uh, oh, there is a, a one slide missing here, but here that is the 2D structure. But if you have the, the standard 2D structure, you will see that, in fact, the, the 3D structure now is really highly compact. You see all the nucleotides are stacked on top upon each other. And most of them are engaged in some kind of pairing, except one maybe or two. So a minimal number of nucleotides will not form contacts. And if you can then assemble this into a, uh, with this annotation, you see immediately that here you have uh, Uxtin uh, sugar edge in trans, uh, Uxtin Watson Creek in, in trans, etc. cetera, uh, sugar edge Uxtin in trans. So this is a really a nice, what we call a module. You see that here you have triple interactions, that this here is Watson Creek, Watson Creek, the usual, but you have also interactions in, uh, in cis uh, on, on the Uxtin side of these nucleotides. You see there is some adenosyl, S adenosyl methionine, here, you see the adenine is giving its oxide edge to the Watson character of the U, and it is recognized in this way by these little RNA molecules, which is a ribose switch. All right, so the idea of going using this nomenclature, this uh, ontology of, 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 of base pairs, it helps you to encode a lot of information, which is all contained in the 3D structure here, which is very difficult to visualize, and especially difficult to remember. Here you understand already, you see already the pseudonaut, you see the triple helix, you see all sorts of interactions. Now you can continue and do this for, for many types of structures and, in the, uh, uh, and, and through alignments. Again, so we have structures, we have lots of sequences, now we align them, all right? So when we align sequences in RNA, we do not care so much about aligning all the A below, 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 below the A's or all the G's below the, Z, the G's. That's not what the point. What we are aligning now is what pairs with what. That's what we are interested. That is, we want to know, we want to align this green part so that here the nucleotide GCUG pairs with this GCG. Uh, G, 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 C, all right? And G, G, C, U, U pairs with the U, uh, uh, A, um, C, U, U, et cetera. 
Right, and so you can continue in this way. Or, or, or the, 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 the purple one here, this GAA pairs with the UU. So we want to maintain this type of contact through the uh, alignment. So we don't want letters below each other. We want pairs below each other and connected together, forming this helices. So this will be an helix here. That is the top helix here. This is the capping loop over there. And the green part will be the bottom helix with a variant at this position. And now we see that these red parts, they do interact with each other, but they form complex motif, a module where we call it, with you have the cis Watson Creek here, you have Augustine, Sugar Edge, and Augustine Watson Creek, etc. So this module has a different type of relationship between each other, and they do evolve differently. So this is also there. Now we have ways of, of, um, of producing this automatically with sequence, somewhat automatically, and to extract the evolution of these type of modules. Again, to, just to show you what's the real difficulty with multiple alignment with uh, RNA molecules. Here, this is U1 RNA. This U1 RNA is a cross. You see, it's really four helices. One helix one, two, three, and four. And uh, you have some invariant regions because it, it binds to the exons of the uh, of, uh, of messenger RNAs. And now, if you look in yeast, you see that helix one is rather well conserved. It has a, a very defined loop, etc. But now you go to, to helix uh, three here, helix two, uh, helix three. You see that helix three here it varies very uh, between. Uh, eight nucleotides and something like uh, 100, uh, so between 10 and 120 nucleotides. So in this position, in the loop here, you have between 10 and uh, 120 nucleotides. So it's almost impossible to produce this type of alignment automatically while maintaining this four-way junction. The four-way junction is always there, whatever you insert at these positions. And you look at helix four, for example, here the loop is between four nucleotides and 650 nucleotides. So huge variations in sequences. And for the automatic alignment, we want to have to maintain the fact that there is a topology between this, these alignments, and also at the same time maintain the knowledge that here you have 640 nucleotides in one precise type of RNA. All right? And this is up to now, we don't, here we lost them. You see, it's gone. We just write the number of nucleotides. We would like to be able to focus on this, extract them, but still maintaining this topology. And this, up to now, we don't manage to do. We do it by hand. Anyway, now you can scan all these, uh, all these uh, RNA molecules, and you will see that you can decompose them all in, uh, into um, in, uh, in, uh, modules, uh, recurrent modules that you will see. For example, this type of, of module here, is, you will find in many, many different types of, of molecules. And uh, what, wherever, whatever the phylogeny, wherever you are, which, whichever the type of molecules, uh, whether it's catalytic or not, all right? And others, all of these other ones. So here, this, again, this nomenclature and contains all the 3D information in a simplified fashion, mm -hmm. and a fashion where you can remember having seen already this type of contact. And so you can say many, here, for example, is the network of interactions of the 30S, uh, the small particle of the ribosome, the 60S. And you see what we saw this morning, for example, here, that this clearly uh, this fractal globular, uh, because you have one domain here, a second domain over there, and a third domain over there. And uh, the red part, you see that you have more contacts between, in, within each domain than between domains. Uh, these are the red, the red elements. All that and all these, and now you can count them, you can find them, you can align those regions, and you see uh, exactly how they should behave through the, million, the, million, uh, the thousands of uh, 16S sequences uh, available. So, so this, this type of analysis gives you that you have modules. What we define as a module is an ensemble of ordered non watson crick based pairs. That is, they are ordered, so that it is a, it's a set of non watson based pairs, but in a given order. That is, you cannot flip this one, uh, this we exchange the, sugar, the square triangle by, with the triangle square. It's not the same. You cannot move them around. I mean, they are in this order, all right? And here also, this, this, this one is uh, the Watson Creek Oxtin in, in, in trans. Is here, it is not over there. And you cannot flip these two. So it's a set, it's a unit. The unit now is a module where uh, you have this ensemble of non Watson Creek base pairs present in there. And they have various names. We have a couple of them, but are, the number is limited and they are absolutely key for forming a 3D structure. If you find a sequence, and you find where well, you can fold it and you can show there is one of those motifs. You know this molecule is really structured and it binds to a protein, it, it does something special, but it is not a standard type of RNA. All right, so the number is limited uh, uh, of, uh, of these uh, identical modules. Occurrence, is they all occur in all types of RNA across all kingdoms of life. So here you have different uh, examples of those. Where do they occur? 
they, so they, they organize internal loops. So that is when you, 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 you draw in 2D structure just the blue part here. The display here is not organized in what's okay pairs, but it does form all these other type of base pairs. So you have organizing this internal loop. You can organize also a junction. Here is one helix, two helix, second, uh, third helix. So you have three helices. And these nucleotides, they organize the junction so that the three helices are pointing in different, in uh, defined region in space, right? And also they bind ligands. We just saw one right before. But here is a protein binding to what we call the king term, you know, at this position, et cetera. And here you have very precise uh, conformation that is uh, uh, this, this one here, that is where you have this type of interactions. Now, the question is, can we detect them in sequences? So they're really key, important for the structure. Again, we, the aim is to find out whether a given non conic RNA is interesting and potentially valuable to expertise or to do more experiments on it. Right? So if we can detect in a sequence that there is a, a one of those modules which are so important and everywhere in sequences, then maybe we'll have more information for, on, on this type of RNA. So can we detect them just barely on sequences? So here, for example, that's a sequence that is, uh, I think, a, 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 a 23S of a, a, so of a ribosome. And are there king turns in this sequence? And if you look, well, there, there they are in the sequence. Right? We know that because of uh, crystallography. But anyway, we would like to be able to, to say that if you give me a sequence, I will tell you where they are. All right, so naturally, uh, we define the way of finding modules uh, is you can say define some type of uh, arrangement of, of the, the nucleotides and say you have so many nucleotides, et cetera. That's, that's rather standard. And then naturally, you will have many false positives, too many, large ways. You, you will get too many, so many possibilities with this type of approach. But when you do this, you are, you are basically working, you are working with consensus sequence. So you are not really. Uh, uh, exploiting what is inside a module. What is inside a module is that all those nucleotides, here you see all the variations. All those variations were obtained by strict alignments of uh, all sequences we know where there is a king term. So we align them very precisely. So we have the whole range of variation of those, of that module in various sequences, various types of RNA. And that's why we, we show here that in this position you have a G, sometimes an A, here you have only an A, etc. You have all these variations. Then, but you encode this by going back to a consensus sequence, and naturally, it does not work. So the, again, this molecular, modular unit, all bases of a module depend on each other. That is, when this one here, you have all these possibilities, you have all sorts of these possibilities over there. But if you, if you look here, you have 63% uh, uh, of the G, 23% of the C, 9% of the U, 1% of a, 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 of an A, but now in front of it, you have an A. Here, you have this, this type of variation, all right? But now, if you, if you replace this one, now for a G, when it is a G at this position, you see all that variation. Which is a C, you see all that variation. So, so it is, uh, you have to take care of all those type of variation, that when you have a residue at one position, the other residues change also, and not only in front, but sometimes down there, sometimes here, etc. Right? You see, so you have to take care of all the variations. As this, this variation is compatible with a given module, because geometrically, they are the only type of nucleotides which can form this type of non restrict base pairs to maintain this module intact. So you have to be uh, to decompose, to, to, to deconvolute all this, and take into account this. And the way we did that is through Bayesian networks. I don't want to explain this in details, but anyway, so we know exactly always where, if, if this one varies, it is connected to all the other ones with this kind of probabilities, etc. So we include in this way, we, we, all the interaction, the interaction networks of that module is taken care of. Right? So, yeah. And in this way, then, you can find now in sequences uh, 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 these modules. And for, but uh, again, we know that they form 2D structures. So in the ensemble of all 2D structures, we will look for those, the, the sub-ensemble, where th these, these two modules can coexist, like in this case here, there. And now you have a probability of uh, uh, this, uh, this type of modules occurring in this set of ensemble. And from this, you can give, deduce the probability of finding that, uh, of having this type of these two modules in that given sequence, so you see that no, false positive you decrease very much. You are, you are much you cleaned up a lot. But it's just one sequence. With just one sequence, you get immediately 3D information here, right? But you still have some false positive. But now, if you exploit alignments and you now you add on this on this sequence, you know where it comes from, and then you get all the other RNA of that type from the, the, the databases. And you, you align them roughly, very rough alignment. 
Don't need to be very precise. It will find itself right away. Then the, the peaks are ex exploding. You have only now the, the, the solution almost. You clean up the map in time. Why did it? Because the power of aligning sequences and to extract 3D information. But at this level, the alignment need not be very precise, but to deduce the Bayesian network, you need a very precise alignment, because there is naturally, if you make any mistake, all your statistics will be influenced by this. And this way, this is also a program, Varna, which is very nice, uh, and it allows you to, to draw with the non rostic base pairs and produce any things, and you see all sorts of new modules that we found in various types of RNA. So this is the example to show you the power of uh, using, exploiting all the range of variations pre present in the sequences if you can analyze them, analyze them and put them in type of a framework, in this case, Bayesian networks. Now, once you have modules, now we can move to modeling by modular assembly. And there also we have been uh, such as, uh, 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 this assembly program where an assembly program is, is uh, uh, has three layers, at least uh, you have uh, four layers. You have visualization layer so that you can visualize what you are doing, the network communication layer, which is below, and you have the production layer, which is in between, and this can be uh, flight, uh, fly, uh, files coming from various programs, it does not matter. But what is really important here is that you have, at the same time, is the same environment, as well you have alignment, multiple alignments, so 1D, you have the 2D and you have the 3D, where in which you can compute uh, modules that you have seen in there, or you can assemble them, you can put them in electron density, wherever the electron microscopy, whatever, and you can, uh, uh, every time you, ma you manipulate here, you will see up here in the 2D editor, etc. So they all talk to each other. And so it's integration of the 1D, 2D, and 3D. Uh, but it is interactive, so it's not automatic, so you have to manipulate. So it's where you are not a spectator anymore, you are an actor. It's just an example, again, of a, a structure with multiple ions, with all the contacts in them, and the standard type of, uh, of uh, 2D monitor. And now, if you want to, to, uh, to, to assemble this type of molecule here, you can just pick in the old databases that we, you can search all everything. You see the, the one which looks the more uh, uh, similar to this one. You pick it, and you can automatically uh, hook it together and assemble this molecule step by step by starting from this modular uh, assembly, uh, all these modules you have found. And for example, in this way, you can really uh, uh, build up the eukaryotic large ribosome unit starting from the small ribosomal unit. So you see that the small and the, and the, 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 the bacterial and eukaryotic ribosome, but you have huge insertion again in there, and there we don't know, and so you have identified that immediately, and you know this, this you have to be, uh, you can then uh, construct. This is the superimposition done after alignments of the bacterial ribosomal unit to the eukaryotic ribosomal unit. Again, strict alignment in 2D gives you an info amazing information at the 3D level. Now, we are trying also to set up with friends uh, in, in the community of RNA modeling uh, a cast like prediction contest. So that is, uh, we, 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 some crystallographers tell us that they are going to, to publish soon a, a crystal structure. We give the sequence to a community and they co try to compute and predict the structure of, the, 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 of the, that molecule in there. Now the question is now, how do you compare? How do you evaluate the product of these automatic modeling programs? Because you can use root mean square deviations, et cetera. So here, for example, 3.85. But as you know, root mean square deviation, it uh, flattens out uh, the, all the deviations. So you, you, you spread the deviations throughout the molecule. You don't know where you went wrong. But if you, the idea of making these prediction programs and this contest is to be able to devise, to, to find out where you make mistakes and to devise where, is the, where are the force fields wrong and, and how can you improve them. So you have to know exactly where you made the mistakes. And this is not an easy problem uh, comparing 3D structures. So we develop, for example, here we have a tool where we can really see that this is a, a better alignment um, prediction than this one. You see you have large red positions. That is where we, we spread, uh, the, uh, the, we superimpose uh, uh, in continuous fashion the two molecules on top of each other. And you see here uh, only a couple of, of positions are really not correctly predicted. Right. But this is not uh, an easy problem to find out. So anyway, we are continuing this on this one. All right, so just to, to finish, so, so Fabrice did this assemble program. Pascal did a lot of this uh, uh, MD processive simulation pro, uh, uh, images that I showed you, that uh, especially uh, uh, the role and importance of ions and water. Neoclis, the that is for the development of this non nomenclature of non-rosic base pairs. 
and Jose Cruz, a PhD student, who did this uh, uh, Bayesian networks to find out about uh, uh, where are these modules in sequences. Right? So all the build up here was really based on, uh, on uh, images. Uh, um, I guess you know in a French tradition, uh, this is not a pipe, a framework, so, but these images we have behind that, we have an insight, and we try to uh, understand better these RNA molecules again to uh, uh, improve the annotation and understanding of their function. Thank you very much for your attention.